Good morning, First Baptist family. Pastor Mike here again uh, with another communication. And this one, I'm just uh, kind of wanting to slow down a little bit, um, take a breath, and talk about how we as followers of Christ uh, should be living in these anxious times. And then some of the things that we're doing as a church, as leadership, to walk through this and stay connected with, with each other so that we can stay grounded, we can stay encouraged, and we can uh, uh, move forward in this. Earlier today or yesterday, you should have received another email or seen another video letting you know that we are canceling several things, including our Sunday morning services. So if you haven't seen that or haven't read that email, please go connect with that right now. I wanna give you a few ways that by God's grace, um, I wanna lead us in walking through this crisis together. And the first way is simply, by being a non-anxious presence in an anxious world. Um, and our first priority, one of our, one of our big values as a church is to call you to live in radical dependence, which is nothing other than a trust in the all-powerful, all-knowing, sovereign, trustworthy faithfulness of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, he's not surprised by this crisis that's overtaken our entire world, the entire globe. He's not anxious uh, about how it's going to play out. In fact, I'm convinced that he will actually use it to carry out his redemptive purposes in our world and in our community. And the cool thing is that what I also believe wholeheartedly is that we can rest in that reality and even more than that, we can join God in his work in the world, in his redemptive purposes, in his redemptive plans. And as leaders, we want to we wanna call you to this kind of radical dependence. We want to call you into joining God in his work in the world. Um, first of all, just by being a non-anxious presence wherever you are in these circumstances. We don't have to be ruled by fear. Uh, oftentimes it's difficult not to be informed by fear or tempted into it, but we don't have to be ruled by it. And we truly believe that as the church, we can love, our, love and bless our neighbors simply by not being afraid. Um, I don't think we need to be foolish. We don't need to throw caution to the wind. That's not wise. But we can be a non-anxious presence. We can embody, we can live out a deep trust that marks our faith as we live out our faith in front of our friends and our neighbors and our family members and in front of people who don't yet believe. So the question is then, and what does that mean? What does it look like to actually be a non-anxious presence in the world? And the first thing I think that we can do, first thing we can devote ourselves to is prayer. Um, I mean, what better way what better time to seek the face of God? What, what better way to spend our time when we're isolated or we have to stay home? What better thing to do than to seek the face of the Lord, than to, to hear from him, to find our comfort in him, to find our solace from him, and also to pray and to intercede for others who are living in anxiety or who are sick or in need, who are suffering or who are anxious. The beautiful thing about prayer is that we can pray even when we're not able to gather. And we had planned to meet every Thursday during the season leading up to Easter uh, at six o'clock for an hour to pray together and to worship together. Right now we're not able to do that. But what we are able to do is to scatter and pray together. Uh, so here's what we're going to do instead. On Thursday nights at 7 p.m., we're going to call the entire church. We're going to encourage you, wherever you're at, to stop and pray with us for an hour. We're working on the technological end to see how, how we can make this work to where we can have a kind of a virtual prayer meeting, maybe through Facebook Live. We'll let you know how that's going to work on our website and through our social media channels and through an email. We'll send you a link to what that's going to be. But we're going to ask you to to stop and pray. If you can't figure out the technology, that's fine. Just spend from seven o'clock to eight o'clock on Thursday nights praying, interceding for people, thanking God for his faithfulness, praying for the church body, uh, listening to God. So stop and pray for, for an hour. We'll let you know how we can do that together uh, through our technology. Uh, so set yourself a reminder, Thursday night, 7 p.m., let's pray together. But on top of that, that's going to be for an hour. On top of that, we're going to take a, 
a play out of, out of the book of the Singapore church. So the, the church in Singapore has been dealing with this coronavirus longer than we have, and they've not been able to gather regularly, just like we're not able to do right now. And what, they've, what some of the people in the church there have done is they've started a prayer time at 7 p.m. every single night. And they're calling it, get the play on words here, COVID-1900. Obviously, the name of this virus is COVID-19. 1900 refers in military time to 7 p.m. So it's 7 p.m. every night. I encourage you to set a reminder on your, on your phone or set an alarm at 7 p.m. every day to stop and wherever you're at to pray for five minutes. Gather your family together. Take five minutes and pray for those in your neighborhood, those who are in need, for the rest of the church. Pray for our world that we would get through this crisis quickly. But whatever you do, get together and pray. If you're alone, get on your knees in your living room or wherever you're at and stop and pray. And let's, let's call each other. Let's, let's set ourselves to pray, to seek God's face during this time. We'll attempt to keep you updated during this time on specific prayer needs. But if nothing else, just spend the time praising and thanking God for, for all of his blessings, all of his goodness and love, interceding for others that you know, your friends and your neighbors, lifting up those who are sick, especially those who are suffering uh, with this virus. Pray for our communities. Pray for our leaders. Pray for a quick outcome and a closure to this pandemic. We will still have two other smaller gatherings for prayer that will continue on until they can't. Uh, one is on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. right here next to the fireplace in the fellowship hall. And then the other will be on Wednesdays at noon, same place. And if you'd like to join us for either of those, please feel free to do so. And as the weather warms up, there may even be opportunity for us to, to gather together outside where it's a little more difficult to spread a disease and go on prayer walks or gather together spontaneously for prayer in different places. So be on the lookout for those and we'll let you know if anything's happening like that. So however you choose to participate in any of those things I mentioned, let's do this. Let's pray. Let's allow God to, to use these unusual circumstances to shape our prayer lives, to shape us into a praying church. The second way I think we can be a non-anxious presence is just by communicating. And, and we're going to work really hard at communicating like this, either through video or through emails or on our website, through our social media channels, pretty regularly to encourage you, to keep you up to date on what's happening at the church, and then to share prayer requests or other needs. So check out those sources. Um, stay connected in that way, and we'll communicate as much as we can. If you have questions, you could also call the church office at 541-447-7717. If you have practical or material needs, I would encourage you to contact one of our deacons, and their contact info is available on our website. And if you have spiritual needs or, or you need counseling or you need prayer, you just need to talk to somebody, uh, feel free to reach out to your home community leader, your home community shepherd, or to one of the elders, and we'd be happy to chat with you and pray for you. The third way we can be a non-anxious presence is by staying connected. And we can do that through the prayer things I, I talked about. We can do that through communication. And, but since we're canceling our regular gathering where we all get together on Sunday mornings for the time being, what we're going to be doing is taking this opportunity to leverage the gifts that God has given us in technology to stay connected with one another as the body of Christ. And we, we truly believe that getting together as the church is an incomparable gift that God has given us. And not being able to gather, not being able to come together and worship and fellowship and pray together and, and hear the word and encourage each other can quickly lead us to loneliness. It can lead us quickly to discouragement, to spiritual atrophy, and we really don't want to do that. So we're going to seek to stay connected because we don't want that for any of us. We're going to do our best to use the tools that we have at our disposal to keep um, connected despite the social distancing that we need to practice during this time. So here's what we're trying to do with our Sunday gathering. This week, we're going to have a gathering pre-recorded, uh, some worship, some liturgy, some prayers, some scripture readings, and a sermon. We'll have that pre-recorded and ready to go by Sunday morning so that 
in your home. You can go to our website or go to YouTube and you can follow along. You can worship along with us in that. That'll be pre-recorded for this Sunday, March 22nd. What we're working really hard to do behind the scenes is for March 29th to have a live stream service ready to go so that you can join into our service in real time. And our hope is that this option, along with these prayer times throughout the week, along with our communication in other ways, is to keep us connected and engaged in relationship. And who knows that God would use this time to, to press us even more into tight relationship as a body together. Home communities still have the option of meeting during this time. Um, we leave that decision up to the leaders and to the groups themselves, but continuing to encourage you to follow the, the health guidelines we've been asked to follow. So if you're sick, stay home. If you're in a high-risk group, if you're immunosuppressed, if you have underlying health conditions, it'd be wise for you just to forgo all gatherings at this point to keep yourself healthy. Regardless of all that, I want to encourage you to stay connected with each other. Phone calls, text messages, social media, FaceTime, uh, one-on-ones, go for a prayer walk together, whatever it is, seek to stay connected. Don't let this enforced isolation completely isolate you from one another. Use the technology, the tools that you have to stay connected with other people. Whatever it takes, use them to your advantage to, to really lean into the body of Christ during this time. And then finally, I think this is the final way that we can lead, that we can, that we can love our neighbors, and that we can be a non-anxious presence in this community of Prineville and Crick County, is to practice generous love. This is another one of our, our top values, like radical dependence, is generous love. And Christ calls us to imitate his life of love, no matter what the circumstances are, wherever he has put us in our communities. And this crisis is a tremendous opportunity to act as, as Christ's hands and his feet in a community that can easily become unanchored uh, in a time like this. And, and, and for us as believers, Jesus Christ is our center. He is our anchor. He is our fortress, our stronghold. He's the rock underneath our feet. And those who don't know Christ during a time like this lack that anchor. They lack that, that stronghold, that firm foundation, and they can get blown about so easily. And I believe that through our concrete acts of love, through our faithfulness um, to obey what God has asked of us, through our non-anxiety, our non-anxious presence, we can point people to a Savior who is a rock, who is a foundation, who is a fortress, and who loves them deeply. So here are a few ideas for loving, and, and please keep an eye out for other ways that you can help. These obviously aren't exhaustive, but these are things that you could jump in and participate in and be part of. And as things move down the road, there'll, there'll be more and more needs. And so keep attuned to them, keep your eye on them, and we'll try to communicate needs out as well. The first is the food pantry. Our food pantry normally operates the last two Mondays of the month from 1230 to 230. From here on out, beginning next Monday, March 23rd, the food pantry will be open every Monday. Same times, uh, but every Monday. So they're going to need more help. And you can help by contacting Joe Stancamp. Here's his number, 973-271-3172. Contact him if you're interested in helping and serving. They're going to be doing a drive through food pantry now, so people will drive up. We'll have their boxes packed for them and deliver them to their cars, and they will need more help for that. So if, if you're able to do that, please do so. Uh, another thing that we're not talking about a whole lot, but which is important, is the Red Cross blood drive, which we have in our, in our building once a month. We'll continue to do that this Friday, March 20th. There's a blood drive right here. And if you look on uh, Red Cross's website, redcross.org, you can see that they're in a severe blood shortage because right now so many blood drives have been canceled. People are backing out for fear of catching this disease. And this health crisis, though, increases the need for donated blood. And it's an easy way for those of us who are healthy to lean into serving our community. So I encourage you to come to the blood drive on Friday if you're able, if you're healthy, to give blood. I'm going to be there giving blood. And I encourage you to sign up and donate. These are just really practical ways that we can help and love our community. Uh, the final thing that we can do to love is um, through social media, 
um, to share and to meet needs. So we've started a FBC Facebook page for sharing needs and for finding opportunities to help each other. So if you're on Facebook, you can post a need to that page. I'd encourage you to go and follow that page so you get updates on it as people post on it. If you have a need, you can post it on there. If you're able to meet a need, you can communicate that through there. So let's use that kind of as a clearinghouse of sorts to, to love each other as the body of Christ. There's also another Facebook page that just started yesterday, I believe, in Prionville, taking a, taking a lead, taking a page out of Ben's book called Pandemic Partners Prionville. So if you type that in, look that up on Facebook, Pandemic Partners Prionville, follow that page. And that's a community-wide opportunity to share needs across the community. So I'd encourage you to engage in that way. Um, you can also contact the church office if you have needs, but you're not connected on social media or Facebook. If you have needs, you want to meet needs, we can get you connected with that. So contact us and we'll help you with that. So in conclusion, here's what I encourage you to do. Non-anxious presence. Let's, let's drop our anchors deeply into Christ during this time. Let's not be anxious. Let's lead in trust and in faithfulness. Let's do that by praying by staying connected, by communicating well together, and by loving others. And beneath, beneath all this, let's just remember that our hope is in Christ. So let's look to him together. Thank you.